I've gotten so many requests in the comments of my videos to review a Suunto watch, so today, that's happening. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Dave from Chase Summit. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Suunto 7. The Suunto 7 is a huge departure from what Suunto usually makes. They typically make rock solid GPS watches for hiking, trekking, and running, but they're usually made with fitness in mind first and smartwatch in mind second, where the Suunto 7 is kind of a smartwatch first and does fitness second. And this is an important launch from Suunto. This is their first Google Wear OS watch. Keep in mind, this thing isn't brand new. It didn't just launch, it launched about five months ago. However, it took me this long to to get my hands on one. Suunto was nice enough to send out the Suunto 7 and the 9 Barrow for the purpose of review. These are actually media units that I'll have to send back when I'm done with them. This is not a sponsored video. They did not pay me in any way and all the opinions in this video are my own. Another thing to note, this is not the retail version of the Suunto 7. This is like a media unit and it's got some fancy stuff inside and we'll take a look at that in a little bit. Before we get into it, if you found this video helpful or entertaining, I really appreciate it. If you give me a thumbs up down below, it really motivates me to keep making these videos and doing this thing that I'm I'm doing here and if you really like this content consider hitting that subscribe button down below so you don't miss more videos from me in the future i typically don't do unboxings on my channel i actually already took the watch out of the box i've got it right here but i do want to show you the contents of this special media unit so let's slide this out and then we pull the cover out we got a little piece of paper that says your adventure starts here i do like what they did with the cover of the box here it's kind of cool it's supposed to symbolize what the Suunto 7 is all about splitting your mountain life with your city life little box here you pop this cover off and then we've got the watch box itself here I'll put that off to the side for a second at first glance I took the watch box out and I've actually been running with the watch for a week now today I picked up the box and it was actually kind of heavy and I was like oh there must be more stuff in there so I dug a little deeper and it's pretty interesting what they stuck in here so if you open up this one find the best routes for your sport and when you open that up you've actually got a genuine Suunto aluminum compass here and this thing is rock solid it's really really nice looks like an heirloom like some grandfather would have in his top draw <laughs> and then we've got this other little box listen to the tracks that take you further and when you open this one up and you push the box out you actually get a pair of jaybird vista earbuds and these earbuds are like 180 bucks by themselves side note i love these earbuds i actually have a full review about these on my channel i'll link that up here if you're interested but yeah, really good earbuds. Like I said before, you won't get this stuff in the box if you decide to purchase a Suunto 7. This is just something they put in the media review units to kind of try to buy you over, I guess. <laughs> All right, and here's the watch box itself. Let's see what's inside. And there we have it, the Suunto 7. All right, so Suunto sent me the white version and this isn't really my color style. I'd probably pick something like the black and lime. There's a few different color options and uh, this is probably my least favorite, but we'll look at the hardware anyways. You'll notice there's a stainless steel bezel around the front here and then the back of the watch is entirely plastic. There's no metal here. The buttons on the Suunto 7 are also stainless steel. The first thing you notice when you open this watch is that it's a big watch. This is a 50 millimeter diameter watch. It's about 15 millimeters thick and it's about 70 grams and weight. It's a chunky boy. I've got some other watches on the table here for a size comparison. You can see the Suunto 9 Barrow here on the left. Got the Apple Watch here. You've got the Garmin Forerunner 945 here. And then we've got the Suunto 7 on the end. So you can see that the Suunto 7 is quite large. It's just about the same size as the Suunto 9 Barrow. The Suunto 7 uses a four button layout. You've got a dedicated back button here that also launches the app draw in the Google Wear OS platform. You've got up and down buttons here. And then you've got a button up top here that launches the dedicated Suunto app that will talk about in a second. Around the back of the watch here, you've got the optical heart rate sensor in the middle here. Unfortunately, no SpO2 sensor on this model. And of course, you've got the charging pins up top here. The included charger is a proprietary uh, pogo pin charger with a magnet in it. Basically, you just stick it on the back of the watch, it clips on there, and it's quite secure. And actually, it is pretty low profile. So if you wanted to plug this into like a USB battery bank and actually wear the watch while you charge it, it would be possible. And you might want to do that for ultra marathons or something like that, because the battery life in this watch isn't terribly long and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Let's talk about the standout feature on this watch and it's the display. This is a 1.4 inch AMOLED display and it gets super bright. I think it's like a thousand nits of brightness and even compared to something like the Apple Watch like you see here it's uh, very bright and it's very comparable. You can see the text on this watch in a super bright daylit environment. You can have the sun glaring right at it. I really like the display if you can't tell. Since we're here let's talk about the watch face that's installed out of the box. What makes it special is the background is actually a heat map of the area that you're in. 
So if you've got some popular running or cycling routes in your area, you'll see that this heat map will actually glow orange in those areas, kind of artwork out of a map in the background there. I really like it. The good news, if you don't like this watch face, you can install a ton of different other ones that are available in the app store. From the watch face, you see your time and you also see your battery status along with your steps for the day. Since this is a Google Wear OS device, uh, the interface is super smooth. Just swiping around from page to page, you can go through your widgets here. And out of the box, you have an overview of some of your training history. Swiping to the left from the watch face brings you over to the Google Assistant. And from here, you can do things like send text messages, check the weather, uh, just search for general stuff on the internet just by using your voice and talking to the watch. Google, how do you make a burrito? Don't make me look like a fool, Google. It doesn't know how to make a burrito, but trust me, it works for some things. And since this is a Google Wear OS device, you also have access to the Google App Store, where you can literally download thousands of applications to do all kinds of different things from music playback to tracking exercises. This ecosystem isn't quite as polished as something like the Apple App Store, but it does have a lot of options for various things. This does actually support music playback as well. You can pair Bluetooth earbuds directly to the watch, playback music in an app, and play them to your earbuds while you're out on a run without your phone. Now the hard part is finding an app that actually works with that because popular platforms like YouTube Music are not compatible yet. And that's weird because they're a Google product. And then things like Spotify don't support things like offline playback right now. Clicking the top left button brings you into the app tray where you can view all of your apps that are available. By default, this comes pre-installed with Google Fit, which will keep track of your steps, activity, minutes, and sleep. Clicking the top right button brings you into the dedicated Sunto app. And this is where you record all of your activities. And basically you can select what type of activity you wanna do here in this menu. You can also select a route for navigation. We'll talk about that in a second. And you can also select your power mode if you wanna reduce your accuracy for the sake of having increased battery life. One unfortunate thing though is in this app, you can't pair an external Bluetooth sensor like a heart rate sensor or a stride pod. It's kind of unfortunate for this price point. We'll talk about price a little later. That said, I did find this app in the app store called Sporty Go that actually does support Bluetooth heart rate sensors and even a stride pod for running power metrics. That's pretty cool to see and you can even export TCX files from it. So the other big advantage of using that Sunto app is that there's actually offline mapping available. For instance, you can see here that I'm in my map view right now and I can just pan around and, and go to different parts of town. Uh, it's really cool and it's actually really fluid just like using it on a smartphone. Now keep in mind, this is not your typical topo map, so there's no uh, contour lines or anything like that. It's not like uh, on the Garmin Phoenix 6 or 4 945. It's really more like using uh, Google Maps. It actually comes from a service called Mapbox. To make use of the offline mapping capabilities, you actually have to pre-download the area that you're interested in. For me, it's showing you know the Boston area here. So if I was gonna be running around Boston, I'd have to select this area and click OK. It would download that tile. So basically you have to plan ahead. That said, the navigation functionality and mapping on the Sunto 7 is kind of limited. For instance, there's no back to start option. If you wanted to get back to your home point, you'd have to visually look at the map and follow it back to the beginning. The other downside is that it doesn't actually warn you if you're off course on a predefined route. Like a Garmin will buzz and say, hey, you're off course. But for whatever reason, this Sunto 7 doesn't tell you that. It will just let you wander off course. And I've tested this several times because I just don't understand it. Without that, I'll have to make sure I'm staring at the map view during my entire activity to make sure I stay on track. Within the Sunto app on your phone is actually where you set up the routes that you want to follow on your watch. You simply tap on a starting point, and now when I select a secondary point, the app actually does all the work on routing you the most efficient way possible to that secondary point. You can, of course, customize that. If you don't want to follow that route, you can drag it over. It also shows you the elevation profile of the route, and you can add waypoints for water sources or aid stations or buildings or anything like that along the route. This is actually really cool. I like this app a lot. The data screens look like this out of the box, but you can fully customize these pages to display whatever data you want to see. You can have up to five data fields per page, and you can also have a page that just shows your map. Within the Sunto phone app is also where you see all of your activity and fitness data. You've got a weekly summary at the top, and then you've got a page for training load and recovery. It'll show you all of your past tracks and it'll also show you your friends tracks if you add them as a friend through their social platform. The training tools in the Sunto app are kind of limited but it does get the job done and this does sync to Strava, Training Peaks, and a slew of other third-party applications that can help you with that. All right let's talk about battery life on the Sunto 7. Battery life is not the strong suit of the Sunto 7 or any Google Wear OS device for that matter. They advertise up to two days of battery life in standby or smartwatch mode. Personally I've been getting a day to a day and a half on a single charge on the Sunto 7, which is not great for a fitness oriented watch, but it's still better than something like the Apple Watch. In GPS on mode, you'll get about 12 hours of battery life, and that will vary with how often the screen's coming on and how many other services
services you have going on in the background. So yeah, this will get you through a marathon, no problem, but if you're running ultras, it might be a stretch. The Cinto 7 supports four major satellite positioning system. That's GPS, Beidou, GLONASS, and QZSS. In terms of GPS accuracy, it's pretty good. Let's take a look. I've taken the Suunto 7 out on several runs to compare GPS and heart rate data against some of my other devices. Here we're looking at the Suunto 7 in orange, the Polar Grit X in blue, the Forerunner 945 in dark red, and the Chorus Apex Pro in pink. You can see here they're all doing a pretty decent job of staying on top of each other and staying along the track. But when we zoom in, you can see that the Suunto 7 is actually doing a bang on job here. It's staying right on track with the side of the road I was on. You can see that the Polar Grit X is wandering off a little bit. It's off to the left side of the road. And the Forerunner 945, Suunto 7, and Chorus Apex Pro are really neck and neck here. They're all doing a really good job. Looking at another corner here, we can see that the Suunto 7 is right on line with the Apex Pro and Forerunner 945. Everything looks really good here. No complaints in the GPS department coming out of the Suunto 7. Now we come to heart rate data, and this is something interesting that I was not expecting. I want to mention that the Garmin Forerunner 945 was actually paired to a chest-based heart rate strap, so that should have the best data out of the bunch here. You can see at the beginning, a lot of optical heart rate sensors have a hard time uh, coming up to speed from a cold start and that's the case here with the Coros Apex Pro. It really lags behind the other devices here. So I'm just going to pick some areas to zoom in on like where I stop here for a second and you can see that the Garmin Forerunner 945 in the Bluetooth chest strap really dropped down very quickly and the Suunto 7 actually reacts very quickly too. It actually keeps up with the chest strap pretty close here where the Coros Apex Pro has a slight delay behind it. Not a huge delay. It's not that big of a deal. If you weren't comparing side by side you wouldn't even see it. They're all doing a pretty decent job here. At the end of the run I elevated my heart rate quite a bit and then I dropped off a cliff and just started walking. So when I zoom in here, you can see that the Garmin Forerunner 945 with the chest strap and the Suunto 7 actually react almost identically here. And the Suunto 7 is doing a great job keeping up with the Bluetooth chest based heart rate sensor where the Chorus Apex Pro struggles a little bit. It's a little bit higher than the other two for the most part coming down here. And then it stabilizes a little bit once I start walking. And this is what I've been seeing on most of my runs. Decent heart rate tracking coming out of the Suunto 7. All right. So after all that, what do I think about the Suunto? 7 as a whole? Well, I like parts of it and I don't like other parts of it. First off, using this thing as a daily smartwatch, like everyday use, is fantastic. Reading text messages, taking phone calls, uh, you know, going through your contacts list, your email, everything works really well. It's super fluid. You can scroll around very easily. Uh, it's very easy to use and I really like that aspect of it. And also looking at the GPS track and heart rate data, we're getting some really solid data out of this watch and I like that as well. However, I do have a couple of major complaints about the Suunto 7 and first off is the size. This thing is massive. I wear big watches. I'm pretty used to like the Garmin Phoenix 6, but this thing is on another level. It's not super heavy, but it's just huge. I'm not a 50 millimeter watch kind of guy. I'm sorry. <laughs> and I feel like people with smaller wrists simply won't be able to deal with that. It's probably gonna be a deal breaker before they even look at the watch. The other issue I have is the lack of external sensor support in the native workout app. This is a $500 watch. Let me pair a chest strap or my stride pod Heck, let me do all of it. It's a premium high-end watch. I should be able to track all of the data, get all of the metrics. Definitely not a hardware limitation. It's definitely software because I'm able to download apps from the Google Play Store that can make use of my stride pod and a chest-based heart rate sensor. So why didn't they bake that into the software? I don't get it. Also, the battery life isn't fantastic. I get it. It's a Google Wear device. It's not going to have great battery life. But as someone who uses like a Garmin, a Coros, a Polar regularly, those things last forever in comparison, especially in GPS mode. 12 hours isn't quite enough for me. I get it, I'm not the target market here, right? Or am I? And lastly, the price. It's 500 bucks and that's a bit steep for a watch with this feature set. All that being said, it is a really cool watch and it is an interesting step in a new direction for Suunto. They don't make Google Wear OS watches and this is something totally new for them. So I'm happy to see them trying something new, exploring, really trying to push the boundaries of what they're capable of creating. I also think there is a market for the Suunto 7. Basically, if you're interested in Apple Watch series, six and you're looking at spending about $500, the Suunto 7 should be on your radar, especially if you use an Android phone. Because if you're trying to buy an Apple Watch, you can't use that on Android, unfortunately. So this could be the next best thing. It's definitely going to be better at tracking activities for running. You've got offline mapping on board, so that's a benefit. And it does a whole bunch of stuff that an Apple Watch can do because you've got that Google Play ecosystem. Is it for everybody? No, but I know there's somebody out there watching this right now that's like, man, that's the perfect watch. I really want that. That's all I've got for today. This is just a quick look at the Suunto 7 and what I think about it so far. If you thought this was a helpful video or at least entertaining, please give me a thumbs up down below. It motivates me to keep creating these videos. And if you really liked it, consider hitting that subscribe button so you don't miss more from me in the future. I'm done now. I'll see you next time.